All right, today we're talking about career decisions, your decision about what your next career goal will be. And the message I wanna take, want you to take away today is that if in doubt, choose growth. There are only ever, ever two paths that you're choosing between. One is the path that keeps you stuck or potentially has you falling behind. And the other path is the one that grows you. That's the one that's going to help you and ensure that you keep progressing. It's the one that's going to move you forward. Here's what I see. I see a lot of you who are stuck in what I call the confusion stage. This is the stage before you actually start being proactive and moving towards a particular career goal. And so many of you are like, oh, I don't know what to do next. And spending a lot of time there and the years go by, the months go by, and you're not actually making any progress. And worse still, you're actually falling behind. So this came up for a client of mine in Be The First, where when she came to me, she was stuck in the confusion stage, stuck in indecision about whether she should stay and progress to partnership, right, go for it, or go somewhere else that would be less stressful. That was one of the dilemmas she was weighing up. She was also thinking, or oh, maybe I could stay and just stay at this level or stay and go for partnership. But what you can hear from those options that she was evaluating is there were just very clearly two different paths. The path of stay, staying still, of potentially being left behind, or the path of, okay, a little bit more scary, venturing out to the new, taking a risk, going for something big, but the path of growth. That was what it boiled down to. Stay still and potentially be left behind or grow and keep progressing. And what was so interesting about this client is that she knows she is absolutely qualified. She believes she's a great lawyer. She knows she's the subject matter expert. She was telling me about all the trust and credibility that she has built in her career. And yet, somewhere deep inside of her, there was this feeling that actually maybe going for partnership wasn't the right thing for her. It might not be. Did she actually want it? Okay. So meanwhile, while she's sitting on this decision for a very long period of time, she was being overtaken by not just her peers, but by juniors, people who had less expertise than her, people who weren't as great lawyers as she is, overtaking her and progressing and becoming partner. Now, let me be clear, none of what I'm saying is about keeping up with the Joneses, for want of a better expression, or like being in this race and treating it as a competition and always needing to stay ahead of other people. This is not what it's about. What I want you to take away from this client example is what can be happening in the meantime while you are in this confusion state, while you are allowing yourself to be stuck and to be deliberating, oh, do I stay or do I go? Do I progress to partnership or do I stay where I am? So if this is you, this is how you will know that you are stuck and it's time to make a decision. First of all, you have the same question you're asking yourself over and over and over again. So that, should I stay or should I go? Do I want to go for partnership? Don't I? When you have been asking yourself that question for a prolonged period of time, this is a sign that you're in the confusion stage and it's time to make a decision. Another way you'll know is you just basically feel confused. Whenever anybody talks to you about career progression or what your goals are, when you have an annual review, you have a sense of either confusion about what you want or feeling torn, feeling undecided, feeling unsettled. So you'd be able to tell just by how you feel about your career when you talk about the future of your career and like like why you're even doing your career and what you might want to get out of it in the future, the general feeling is confused or unsettled or even probably a little bit frustrated. Here's how you also know you're stuck in the confusion stage. Here's what you're actually doing or rather not doing. You're not taking ownership of anything, right? You're showing up, you're doing your day job, but you're not actively thinking, what do I need to do to progress? And where do I want that progression to take me? And what's it going to take to get there? Like you're not asking yourself those questions and then having a plan and being proactive about doing what it takes to move towards the, the answer to those questions, to move towards the goal that you decide. 
Obviously, if you haven't got a goal, it's quite hard to have ownership of your career to the extent that it moves you towards your goal. So that's a way you know based on what you're not doing in your career right now. Also, if your general approach to your career, and this is similar to being to not taking ownership, but it's another way you might identify it in yourself, is if you're passive. If you're someone who feels that things are out of your control, if you are someone who relies on uh, and has the assumption that, well, every year I'm progressing, every year I'm just getting more qualified, every year, and like at a certain point they will make me um, a senior associate, or at a certain point I'll be counsel, or at a certain point I will get there and I'll be partner. If you have this very passive approach that your career is something that happens to you, that's how you know most likely you're in the confusion stage. You might not feel confused, but what you absolutely are is very passive and disengaged. That might be the emotion that you experience that you feel. So if that's you as well, then you're going to find this episode so valuable. It's going to give you, I hope, a kickstart, right? And really energize you and motivate you to make a decision about where you want to go in your career. And then, of course, I'm going to offer you at the end the first step I want to encourage you to take so that you can start moving towards that. Another way you know you're stuck in this confusion stage Um, the stage that where you're not going anywhere, where nothing changes, is you attend lots of webinars and lots of trainings. And you attend them and you're open to all of them and you're learning all of the things and you're taking all of the notes and you're just like out there listening for any knowledge that might come your way, any advice, and you're just sort of treating it all equally and taking it all on board. But what's actually happening is you're consuming all of this education and training and knowledge and experience that you get when you attend these seminars and webinars and trainings, but you're not actually proactively or actively implementing what you hear. And the reason why I know you're you're not actually implementing and making progress is because when you're consuming everything, when you're listening for everything that you could possibly need and could possibly be useful in your career, then you're not really focused on anything, on any one thing. It's very hard to take effective action when you've got a hundred things that you could be doing versus having a very clear goal, knowing the three, four, maybe five things that you need to get there and focusing on implementing everything you learn about those three, four or five things. Do you see the difference, right? It's like the difference between like going out into the ocean and casting an enormous net and just seeing what happens to you happen to catch and what comes up versus being really specific about what you want to catch the knowledge the gems the information you need and going to a particular site where you know a particular place where you know you're going to get that information or get that knowledge or get those skills and focusing there right how much more likely are you to take action and get the result that you want another sign that you're in this confusion stage is you perhaps do lots of random acts of progress, (laughs) random things to progress your career. Like you'll randomly go up to someone and say, will you be my mentor? (laughs) I've had a lot lately of that lately. People coming up and saying, oh, I really want you to be my mentor. And it's really interesting. I've never met them before. No idea who they are. Don't know what the goal is they want to achieve. There's just no context for it at all. It's just so interesting. Um, Another example of a random act um, of progress or to progress your career might be, um, like, it's, I guess it's the flip side of seizing opportunities. It's, it's just going, saying yes to every single thing without actually evaluating or thinking, like, what could this opportunity bring me? Now I'm all for being open to like the importance of saying yes to opportunities as they come your way. And especially if you're junior in your career, it's really important that you say yes more often than you say no. I want to make that absolutely clear. I don't want to sort of crush your appetite or your spirit for trying new things and seizing opportunities, even when you don't know where they might lead. But there's something about the like saying yes to something for the sake of, oh, well, it might progress me and this is what I'm supposed to be doing. It's the doing things that you have been told or think you're supposed to be doing to progress progress your career rather than having 
a clear objective and going, right, this is what I'm going to do proactively to help me achieve that objective. So those are the types of behaviors you want to be onto yourself if you notice yourself doing those that are a sign you're in the confusion stage. And then just more generally, if where you are now, if it feels like you are in a no man's land in your career, where nothing really happens, it feels like obviously you're doing your day job, but you have no sense of, you're not making any measurable progress. You might be assuming you're progressing, hoping you're progressing, but there's not actually anything tangible or measurable that you can get your hands on. That's what I call sort of a no man's land. So if that's where you are, you're going to find this so useful. As I said, this episode, if you follow what I advise you in this episode or in this session, it's going to give you the impetus impetus to just make a decision so you can start moving forward, get out of this confusion stage. I'm going to come back to the progression pathway and the difference like between if you're actually progressing. So, you know, you're progressing if you're doing one of those progression steps. I talk about this in episode 50. So do go back and listen to the uh, to that episode if you're not aware of what the progression pathway is. But when you're on that pathway, you have a very clear sense that you are um, acquiring tools, that you're learning new skills, that you are having or Um, hearing of new ideas like either way you're acquiring or building and what's happening is you have this sense that your performance is improving your experience is growing and it's tangible and measurable okay versus the just being swept along and another year goes by and yeah you're another you have another year pqe but you can't measure it you couldn't describe or explain to somebody the progress that you have made in that previous year okay And we don't want this. We don't want the months and the years to be going going by and nothing changing. Apart from the fact that you, the feeling of being left behind, which is not a nice feeling, right? That's something my client had where she was just feeling really anxious about being left behind. And it was really revealing to her how stuck and how still she had been and how much time she had been in this confusion zone. So we don't want the feeling of being left behind. And also what we don't want is just for your career to feel like something you are like to for it to feel like a no man's land where you're treading water because you and I both know that treading water is really hard work. It actually can be easier to keep moving forward. If you think about yourself in a big stretch of water and the waves and the usual circumstances of life happening, imagine those being the waves around you that are tossing and turning you. It can actually be harder to just be treading water and staying still. And in some ways, like if you approach it properly and you have the right skills and you have the right tools, then actually moving and swimming through the water, making progress, moving to a new destination can be so much easier. It's certainly more rewarding and it actually can require less energy from you than it takes to just be treading water and staying still. So hopefully I've sold you on the value of just moving forward, making a decision to progress, getting out of this confusion, this stagnant confusion stage. We want to stop making this mistake of spending too much time there, too much time in indecision. Now, look, I get it. One of the reasons why you stay in indecision about should I go for partnership or should I just leave and go somewhere else and stay, go somewhere less stressful. I get why that feels like a hard decision to make. Like, you want to know what the right answer is. We always want that when we're making decision. We want to know what's the right thing to do. And it's so interesting that we have that approach to making decisions because you will never actually know what is the right decision. Like, think about that for a second. You'll never know if decision A is the right decision or decision B is the right decision because we don't know what's going to happen. You cannot actually predict. And imagine what the conditions are going to be when you make that decision. You don't know what the outcome is going to be. That's always why I'm like really, like if any of my clients express any regret over a past decision, I'm onto that straight away because we want, want to be making the best decisions. Like we do make the best decisions that we know how to make in that moment because we don't have that extra information that becomes available when we've got hindsight, right? So think about the reason why you are in this stagnant confusion stage 
is because you're waiting for reassurance about what the right decision will be. And what I want to offer you is that when it comes to deciding where to go in your career, what your goal will be, how you want to progress, I'm going to offer you that there is no right or wrong decision. There is just the decision you're willing to make and commit to making that the right decision. Like, think about that. What if whichever decision you made, you could make it a success for yourself? That's one thing I want to offer you to free you from the attachment of there being needing to be a right or wrong decision. But don't stop there. If you're choosing between two decisions and they're both the right decisions, there's still a really important criteria, piece of criteria that I want to encourage you to apply. And it's this. When choosing between two options, always choose the option that will grow you. Always choose growth. One of the options, remember, is more likely to keep you staying still, perhaps have you falling further behind. Doesn't mean it wasn't the right decision. We're not going to question the validity of that decision if that is the one you choose. But when faced with a choice between staying still or potentially regressing, okay, and growing and moving forward and progressing, always choose growth. That's what I want to encourage you to do. And at the end of this session, I want you to just make the decision. I want you to evaluate what is the decision that's going to grow me? What's the decision that's more likely to mean I'm still in the same place a year from now, two years from now, and I want you to choose the decision that grows you. Here's how you know the difference. (laughs) When you're evaluating between the two decisions, one decision is likely to feel significantly more uncomfortable than the other. Okay, that is a kind of quick and easy indicator of the decision that is most likely to grow you. We are most uncomfortable, like when we are most uncomfortable, we are most likely to grow. It's that growing pains. It's the stepping out of your comfort zone. We, we talk about this all the time. We know that all too much. So if you're thinking about partnership and it makes you feel really uncomfortable and it feels scary and it feels like you don't know if you'll make it and you feel, feels like... And you're saying to yourself, I don't know if when I get there, I'll be any good at it. Or if when I get there, I will feel like I belong or I don't know if it's right for me. Those are all like indicators or symptoms of a fear and a discomfort over that decision. And so what that shows you is that is the direction where you will get so much growth if you follow that fear, if you like. I talk about imposter syndrome is the way. That's one of the imposter syndrome, like the the beliefs and the philosophies you get when you work with me on your imposter syndrome. And what I'm doing there is encouraging you to follow those yucky feelings of like not enough and fear about whether you belong and the thinking around perhaps questioning, like questioning your right to be here, all of that, questioning your deserving to go to the next level, whether you've got what it takes all of those yucky thoughts and feelings that come up that we know is imposter syndrome. I'm going to be talking a lot more about that again in the coming episodes. That is imposter syndrome and it's the sign that you are on the right track. So we don't want to pull away from that. We want to lean into it because imposter syndrome is the way. Imposter syndrome is the way to your growth. It's the way to your next level. Okay, so that's one of the ways in which you know which is the the path of the most growth is often the one of the most discomfort. All right, so I want to share with you a quote which I remember, gosh, I stumbled across it just when I was preparing for, for teaching this session, but I remember using and and coming back to this quote again and again and again in the early years of building my career, putting myself out there, of being visible, of trying to showcase my value when I felt like so exposed and I was so fearful. And this quote really gave me such a boost and reminded me of the of two things, actually. It reminded me of the importance of growth and why it's just so essential that we choose it, that this is the the human experience. It's the most fulfilling human experience is to choose growth. And it also reminded me that the choice I make about where I go next isn't a choice to be based on whether like I'm afraid or not, or actually I'm going to change that. What it did actually did the opposite is it reminded me that 
the fear I felt over the path of the most growth, that fear was exactly what I needed to choose. So in choosing growth, I was choosing fear. That's what it was. And so this quote really just so beautifully helped give me the courage to face the fear and do it anyway, effectively. So it's a quote by Abraham Maslow, right? And it goes like this. One can choose to go back towards safety or forward towards growth. Growth must be chosen again and again. Fear must be overcome again and again. Isn't that amazing? One can choose to go back towards safety or forward towards growth. Growth must be chosen. Fear must be overcome again and again and again. How does that change things for you? Thinking about the options that you're weighing up to go for partnership, partnership, for example, or to move firms or to stay where you are. Like, which one is you choosing growth? Which one is you choosing to overcome the fear? Hopefully already it should be feeling clear what the answer is and what you want to be choosing. And your way, this is your way out of the confusion stage. Okay, so I'll tell you what happened with my client and where we got to with her and how I walked her through this to really get her engaged and because it's her choice, right? It's always going to be your choice. When you join Be The First, I'm never going to be the one that makes a choice for you and tells you what you should have as your progression goal. But I will like help and reveal to you where you're getting stuck in the confusion stage, where you're not going for a particular goal, not going for partnership because of fear, because of the fear of whether you will are good enough, the fear of whether you will be successful, the fear of what it will be like when you get there. Yeah, I'm going to reveal all of that to you so that you make the decision that is you choosing growth. You make the best decision for your growth, the best decision for your progress, and not the decision that's just going to keep you like playing it safe and staying stuck and otherwise kind of falling backwards as that Abraham Maslow quote uh, uh, indicates. All right, so here's what we did with my client. Number one, I helped her to reconnect to her values and I want to invite you to think about this too. If you are someone who has been ambitious throughout your life, if you are someone who has like accomplished a number of, uh, a number of, successes okay if you have overcome challenges to get where you are and honestly if you are a black lawyer (laughs) this is you you are someone already even wanting to be a lawyer is ambitious being willing to do what it takes to be a lawyer is ambitious wanting to get the training contract wanting to qualify um on wanting to be offered a, um, a, a role on qualification, wanting to be a junior associate or a senior associate. Like if you think back on your journey, then the chances are you will find lots of evidence that you are somebody who values achievement and somebody who is ambitious. So with my client, I helped her see and I teased out of her all of the decisions she's made in the past, which have been based on or driven by her desire to achieve based on an ambitious nature that she has that is innate in her. And in revealing that to her, I was able to show her that going for partnership was just one of a whole series of decisions that she's been making her whole life about where she wants to go next, about what she values and what's important to her. So that suddenly made the idea of going for partnership already. She was starting to see that in a different light. It stopped being this all or nothing, will I make it, won't I? And it started being about who she is. She's someone who progresses. This in her nature to keep growing, to keep achieving. So it makes absolutely no sense at all that she step off, almost step off the ladder and just go somewhere else to cruise and stay at the level that she's she's out. That would be out of integrity. It would be unusual for her. Okay, the second thing we talked about and what I asked for and we really drilled down into is like, what is stopping you? What's stopping you from taking that more scary, what for her felt that clearly the more uncomfortable path? And it was absolutely for her the fear of failure. The fear of failure and the fear of the discomfort, like of what (laughs) she knew and we all know like will be required of us as we go for that next level. I'm obviously giving lots of examples of going for partnership because that's 
like the level that you're at if you're in private practice when you join be the first so this is what i see more often than not but it can be if you're not at that stage there yet then whatever your next level is that you're evaluating it could still for you be the fear of either failing and going for that that goal or the fear of how uncomfortable it is going to be <laughs> in getting there, knowing what it's going to require of you. For example, in Be The First, one of the things I teach you is to be more visible. I get you showcasing your value. I get you building relationships with people who are different to you. I get you receiving feedback. These are all, these are all things that can make you feel very uncomfortable if you're not someone who's currently doing that. And for my client, all of those things would create discomfort for her. So we identified, okay, fear of failure, fear of the discomfort. And then I said to her, and I want to offer this question to you too. What if whichever path you choose, you will experience discomfort either way? So it's going to be uncomfortable to go for partnership, but it's going to be uncomfortable not to go for partnership. It's going to be uncomfortable to stay where you are. It's going to be uncomfortable to move firms for things to be a little bit calmer and easier and less stressful. Why? Because of the pain of unfulfilled potential. I talk about this a lot. It's that inner knowing that you have, that you are capable of more, that you can go further. It's an inner desire to see how far you can go, to see what your potential is. That, my friends, we experience as a kind of pain. And it may not be a sharp pain that kind of grabs your attention and you like can't ignore. It's a pain that you can ignore for a certain amount of time, but you know it's there and it doesn't go away. That, my friend, is also really uncomfortable. And the difference is that the discomfort of going for your goal doesn't stay uncomfortable forever. In going for your goal, you then start to pick up so many there's so much value you get along the way in seeing what your potential is and how much you grow. I'm going to talk about the value of that in a moment, but you get so much along the way that it becomes less and less uncomfortable. You learn new skills, you acquire new tools that make the process feel easier and easier and easier as you go along versus the pain of unfulfilled potential. It might not be really sharp and sudden at the beginning, but it can be constant and it can still be there years later, still kind of haunting you, this ongoing frustration and sense of perhaps even regret, right, of not having gone for it, all right? So what if, whatever you choose, there's two kind of ways of I'm offering you to look at it. There's previously I said, what if whichever way you choose, you can make it the right decision, you can succeed and make it right for you and a success. And to help you with the decision, what if... Either way, you know you're going to experience discomfort. So if you know it's going to be uncomfortable, if there's discomfort either way, if you knew that were true, which one would you choose? Yeah. Would you choose the path of growth or would you choose the path of staying still? Staying still doesn't mean not being uncomfortable. You still get to feel uncomfortable when you stay still. So which do you want to choose? This was also really, really helpful for my client. And the fact that <laughs> she couldn't avoid discomfort and it wasn't a simple of question, simply a, a matter of make the decision that would cause me the least discomfort. The fact that she was choosing between two types of discomfort made, again, it so much easier for her. And it will make it easier for you too, I hope. All right. So it really quickly became clear to my client what she needed to do. She really started to see the potential rewards that were waiting for her if she was willing to go for it, to choose growth. She was able to see that that was the path that would give her the most opportunity for learning, okay, about herself, about her role, learning the skills, learning the tools. It was the direction and the decision that was going to help her become like a much bigger and high level version of herself, like thinking of what she would need to learn in order to get there. In other words, the growth that she would experience. She would learn how to take ownership, right? She would have to be much more proactive and that would be a skill that she would have, taking ownership of her career. She would learn how to stop overworking. It's very challenging to become partner when you're someone who just overworks all the time. Yeah, you have to learn how to not do that. So you, she was going to have to learn to delegate effectively. And this is an area where she gets stuck and gets held back a lot. But learning to do that, 
she's going to have to learn to showcase her value, like know her value and talk about it and like showcase it to the world so that other people see it. She's going to have to learn to do that and overcome the cringy feelings that she has um, right now when she thinks about doing that. She's going to have to learn to be more visible, to be front of centre, and she was going to have to learn to validate herself. One of the things that comes with going for partnership, choosing growth, is you also have to learn to be able to build, like see the value in yourself, to know when you are doing something well, doing a good job, and be able to tell yourself that. And at the same time, also be able to evaluate and know where you have room for growth and go out and like work on growing in those areas. Can you hear the level of maturity that my client is on her path to gaining now? I can already see it in her in just a few sessions, right? The level of maturity that she's gaining as a lawyer. And this is what is on offer for you too when you choose growth at whatever level. You will mature so much as a lawyer, which is going to position you so brilliantly for the rest of your career and help you keep progressing as far as your potential as you want to go and as your potential will carry you, which is all the way to the top if that's what you want. Okay, now before I finish, one thing I want to make you aware of, what will come up for you as you take this more, it is the more courageous path. It is the path of growth. What's going to come up? Come up? is the fear that it's going to be too much pressure, okay? That it's going to be too much work. And what I want to offer is that you, this is something that you can stay in control of. The best way I can describe this is where I put it it to my client. Deciding to go for partnership, it's like getting on a train, right? Getting on a train and the destination is partnership. And one of the things I know that my client experienced, and you may have experienced, is this feeling is like once I'm on the, on the train, it's just going to leave the station and it's going to be hurtling at tremendous speed and it's going to be overwhelming. So much is going to be required of me. It's going to be exhausting. It's going to be very stressful and I'm going to be out of control and it's all going to become too much. I'll be overwhelmed. And what I wanted to offer to my client was that she was what I offered to my client is she is driving the train. She is driving the train to partnership. That means she gets to control the speed. She gets to stop the train. She even gets to decide if she wants to get off the train. So she gets to decide if she doesn't want it actually in the end. Now, I did caveat that with the fact that she would absolutely need to speak to her coach first. (laughs) They're making decisions about getting off the train without speaking to your coach, right? That was really important because we want to make sure that the decisions that are driving Uh, sorry, the reasons that are driving that decision, right? Your motivation for getting off the train, we want to make sure it's in integrity, make sure it's one, there are reasons that you like and not just that you are doubting yourself and not thinking you're going to make it. You can see the really important distinction there, okay? So think about it. Think about the, the goal that is the growth for you, be it partnership or whatever your goal is. If you think about that as a destination, And you are driving the train towards that destination. You will always be in control. So you will be in control of how overwhelmed it feels. And crucially, when you work with me and you work with me and be the first, I am here to support you. I am here to help you. I'm in here when in those moments where you think, I want to get off, I want to get off because it's, I don't think I'm going to make it or I think I can't handle it. I am here to support you and give you the tools and the skills that is going to make that journey not just possible for you, but actually an enjoyable and a rewarding one. Because remember, the destination is just one one thing. It's who you become along the way that counts for so much. And that's why, that's the whole point. That's the real value of choosing growth. When you decide to go for partnership, it's, yeah, it's a decision to go for partnership, partnership, but actually it's a choice you're making about who you are in the world and who you can be in the world and you growing into that version of yourself. Yeah. Okay. So where I want to leave you is with like what's waiting for you. If you're willing to do this work, if you're willing to make the decision and you can make the decision right now to choose growth, make the decision between those, that dilemma that you've been dancing between and that you've been undecided about, just make the decision. You can literally make it right now. It only takes a minute to make a decision. Once you've got the information that helps you differentiate between the two, and I've given you that in this episode, okay? 
So now let's go to what's waiting for you on the other side of making this decision and getting on the train, like driving this train towards your goal. You will reach your goal. You make the decision to go after a goal and you take the action and you'd be willing to persevere, you will reach your goal. I say to my clients who want to become partner, you will become partner. I can't necessarily control the exact circumstances in which you will become partner and I cannot tell you the exact date, but you will become partner. If you set that as your goal and we work towards that together, you will become partner, okay? What else will happen? You will have a set of skills and tools to thrive in this industry. Not just survive, not just tread water, not just keep your head above the water, yeah, not just stay afloat, to thrive, to do really well in this industry or continue, you're already doing well, continue to do really well, to do even better in this industry and to do so in a way that's more fulfilling for you because you're fulfilling your potential in this industry. And what that means is once you have those skills and you are thriving, you'll be able to keep progressing and thriving all the way through your career, all the way to the top. All right. All of that from just being willing to say enough, no more confusion. I'm making a decision. I'm choosing growth. If you are a mid to senior level black lawyer and you want to progress within the industry and you've been dancing between, should I go for partner or should I move and go to another firm and just stay where I am? Or should I go for partner in this firm or stay where I am in this firm? Whatever your version of the confusion stage is, whatever it looks like for you, I want to encourage you to book a free consultation with me. I will help you make this decision. I will help you see that either way, it's discomfort. I will help you see that you're choosing between one path that will grow you and another path that will just keep you where you are. And I will help you see the value of choosing growth. So book a consult with me. I put the link in the comments or in the notes to where, however you're experiencing this, this lesson and this teaching. Click on that. If you're a mid to senior level black lawyer, I should emphasize, then book a consult with me and let's get you past this stage so you can get started on your progression pathway. All right. I hope you found that useful. Questions, comments, share with me. I'd be happy to answer any of them. Just share in the comments below um, or feel free to DM me on social media. Or of course, you can email me on caroline at carolineflanagan.com if you've got any questions. That's it from me. I'll be back next week. But in the meantime, keep progressing. Bye for now.